Hi, everyone, and welcome to the last session for Agriculture Awareness Day 2021. Thank you for joining us. My name is Krista Matwichuk. I'm the acting manager of the Bruce D. Campbell Farm and Food Discovery Centre, which is located at the Glenlee Research Station of the University of Manitoba's Faculty of Agricultural and Food Sciences. The Discovery Centre is a hands-on interpretive centre all about agriculture and food production. We take a system-wide approach to educating the public about safe and healthy food produced right here in Manitoba and in Canada. The centre was designed so that guests could come and actually see right into our hog barn without breaking any biosecurity and also engage with some of the exciting and hands-on exhibits we have throughout the centre. We also tour many guests through the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba Discovery and Learning Complex, which is a new state-of-the-art dairy barn we have at the Glenlee Research Station. The majority of people that come to Farm and Food are school groups that are joining for curriculum linked field trips uh, and they learn a little bit about agriculture, but we're also open to the public for guided tours and fam family fun events throughout the year. Right now we just were granted permission to reopen to limited groups, so we are finally hosting people in person once again. Our goal at Farm and Food is to tell the story of modern farming and food production by sharing, translating and amplifying accurate information on agriculture and food production in Manitoba, as well as some of the leading edge research taking place in the faculty. Agriculture Awareness Day is all about celebrating the important role that agriculture and food plays in driving our economy and the impact on all of us by providing us with safe, sustainable, nutritious and of course delicious food. This year's theme of protein and emerging agricultural technology highlights the exciting animal and plant protein work that's going on to advance Manitoba. So joining me today is professional home economist Getty Stewart. Getty worked with the Manitoba Agriculture and Food Knowledge Exchange or MAKE to create some recipe sheets that not only include simple and delicious recipes but also feature some of the related research taking place in the faculty. So before we get into the recipe demo, I want to give you a bit of background on MAKE. So once again, MAKE stands for Manitoba Agriculture and Food Knowledge Exchange, and it's a new initiative of the Faculty of Agricultural and Food Sciences, where the researchers are connecting with the public by sharing the research they're conducting aimed at improving the ways we grow, raise, and process food in Manitoba and in the prairies, including quite a bit of research on proteins. MakeManitoba.ca is designed to share factual information in a variety of formats to suit the audience, whether it's consumers, farmers, or agri-food processors. There's something for everyone. Content includes traditional uh, materials such as articles and fact sheets and some novel ways of sharing research information, including podcasts, fact sheets, or infographs, and of course, delicious recipe cards. Some of the research topics include food innovation, food safety and nutrition, crop breeding, agronomy, animal care, the environment, the overall sustainability of food production systems, and new content is added regularly. So head to makemanitoba.ca and see what they have going on. And if you're a podcast person, you can actually access their podcast on Spotify directly. Getty today has pre-recorded a demonstration using the Make Vegetarian Tacos, but since it's Taco Tuesday and Egg Awareness Day, she's actually making them two ways. One using textured vegetable protein, which is a meat analog or a plant-based product that's designed to mimic the taste, feel, uh, and look of a ground meat. And where she's also going to be using ground bison thanks to Brooks and Jen White of Borderland Agriculture. And so if you were lucky enough to join the first uh, session of Egg Awareness Day, you heard Brooks talk about some of the cool stuff going on on their farm, and you can head to their website to check out more information on that. This versatile taco recipe uh, available on makemanitoba.ca and it includes some really cool research facts on the meat analog research that's taking place in the Faculty of Agricultural and Food Sciences. After the video is played, Getty and I are going to rejoin live and answer any questions you may have. So you might notice on the side there's a questions tab, that's where you can submit your questions uh, and we'll address those after the video. So with that, let's get right into the recipe demonstration. Hi and welcome to my kitchen and welcome to Taco Tuesday. I'm so excited to share these recipes from Make Manitoba with you today. And tacos are a fantastic way to explore the different 
protein varieties that we have available to us and the protein sources that from sources that we grow and produce right here in Manitoba. And I'm talking about both plant based proteins and animal based proteins. And the, this taco recipe is a great for uh, trying all of them. Today, we are going to make a plant based version and a animal based protein uh, version. We are using bison for the animal and this textured vegetable protein for our plant based uh, tacos. So let's get started with the bison meat and this comes to us thanks to Brooks and Jen White from Borderland Agriculture. So we thank them for uh, uh, allowing us to, to use this bison and we are going to fry this up and get it nice and cooked and scrambled and seasoned and then we are going to use that as part of our topping for our tacos. Now bison meat as you can see is a little bit darker than uh, say beef, but it is um, high in protein, high in zinc, low in fat, perfect for this kind of recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start heating my pan and let that get a, a little bit warm and then I'm going to fry my, uh, my bison in that. All right, so we have left this brown on the one side. It's time to flip. And you see that we have some nice browning on this side. Now we want to do the same to uh, the other side. And just, I'm flattening it, but I'm not stirring it at this, at this point. And we're going to let that brown. In the meantime, let me talk to you about uh, bison. Bison is a great meat to use in dishes like this. It's a great alternative to other ground meats. Uh, although in a recipe like this, you can use all the different kinds of uh, ground meats that, that you can think of as well. It's lean. It, it, the flavor is a little bit sweeter and maybe a little bit more gamey than, um, than beef or ground beef or ground pork uh, as well. So do anticipate that. But my kids loved it. They, uh, they loved the, the ground bison flavor and it really goes nicely with the more salty, savory toppings and fillings that we're using in these tacos. So if you've never tried um, bison, this is a great recipe to try it out on. Okay, now that we've let it brown on both sides, now is the time when we want to start scrambling it. And then fairly soon, we're going to add the seasoning and other ingredients. So it won't take long at all. And that's a beautiful thing about this recipe as well. Um, I mean, the hardest part is chopping all your, all your other toppings. Um, doing this filling is the easy part. So as that um, continues to cook, let's talk about the other ingredients that we're using. So we're using half a cup of onions. We're using a clove of garlics. And did you know that if you mince or dice or uh, squish your garlic about 10 minutes before you're actually using it in the recipe, you're going to get more of those health benefits from the garlic. So um, chop it and just let it sit while you're preparing all the other ingredients and then you'll get more of those beneficial uh, uh, benefits from your garlic. Uh, the seasoning that we're going to add is we are adding some chili powder, some cumin, and some oregano and we're going to mix that all into our ground bison. Now it, in the recipe it says to uh, taste test and to adjust seasoning based on taste and you can certainly take that uh, advice for this recipe and just about every other recipe. I think it's always important to make sure that it, a recipe is done to your liking and not to the recipe writer's liking. So you go ahead and you taste your uh, your bison, your TBP, whichever protein source you're using, and adjust the seasoning. So you may decide to add a little bit salt and pepper. You may decide to go and add some cayenne pepper if you prefer things a little bit spicy. So those are all options that are open to you. And now that my bison has been cooked thoroughly and there is no more red left, I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. And we want to make sure that those get nice and glassy and that'll cut down on the harshness of the, of the onion flavor 
and it also gives the a chance if there are any small pieces of bison that are remaining to be pink it'll give it them a chance to cook as well so our onions have cooked our bison is well cooked i'm adding some garlic and i'm going to add those other spices and don't be surprised if my kids come running at this point because when you add them add these seasonings that's when you're going to get some great aromas in the room i mean the garlic and onion uh, and bison are already doing a good job but this just takes it to the next level so um, i'm adding that cumin chili powder and oregano going to give it a good stir now each of our different protein sources is going to have a different flavor uh, profile and that's why um, adjusting the seasoning to your taste preferences is uh, is paramount in this in this recipe and really does depend on the protein source that you're using i found that when i do use the the bison i tend to add a little bit more of the chili powder and uh, add a little bit of salt and a little bit of cayenne pepper because my family doesn't mind things a little bit on the spicy side so you decide how much uh, of that to add and taste test and then my friends your uh, bison meat your topping for your tacos is finished so as i mentioned it's really important to taste test your uh, your product before you serve it so i'm going to taste my bison mm. So I'm catching a little bit of that cayenne. I'm missing a little bit of salt, so I'm going to add a little bit. And always making sure that I don't pour from the whole container. Just do a little bit of that, adding, adding to, uh, to that, stir it in, and have another, another taste test. Now, the, one of the differences between the textured vegetable protein, or the TVP, and the bison and some of the ground meats is the ground meats are a little bit drier than the pre-cooked TVP. So if you want to make this a little bit saucier, you could add a little bit of flour and cook that in a little bit and then add a little water and you'll have more of a saucy base to your, to your ground meat. But uh, the last time I served this to my family, they were fine with it just the way it is. So I'm just going to leave it uh, crumbly and have this out as one of our toppings. So the second version of this taco recipe that we're going to make is using TVP. Now TVP stands for textured vegetable protein. And basically this is using a plant and uh, extracting the protein from that plant and shaping it into a product that looks, tastes and feels like an animal product. So it's easy for us to substitute in recipes like this taco recipe. And it just opens up the amount of variety of proteins that we can use in our, um, in our dinners and our regular eating habits. So we know that 40% of Canadians are interested in exploring more plant-based protein options. And this textured vegetable protein is definitely one of them. And it's being studied and uh, processed right here in Manitoba. In fact, it starts with the uh, products grown on Manitoba farms. So we have um, our soybeans and the textured vegetable protein, the CVP, that we're using today um, does come from a soybean base. So the protein from these soybeans, which are grown in Manitoba or somewhere on the Canadian prairies, uh, is extracted to be used in making this textured vegetable protein. But it doesn't have to come from just soybeans. Our TVP could also come from green peas or yellow peas. And these dried peas are also crops grown here on the prairies and in Manitoba. And they are being studied at the U of M as well. So um, very cool op uh, option. Another place where we can get uh, protein for using in food products like TVP is from wheat. And of course, we are some major wheat growers here in the prairie. So all of these foods which we grow here are then being researched and studied at our university and then being used at our new facilities, our new pro plant protein processing plants operating here in Manitoba, world-class facilities, world-class class research happening right here to help us figure out how we can get more nutritious 
uh, variety and uh, different sources of protein in us. So we are studying both the animal side of things and the plant-based side of things, and we as consumers are benefiting. Now, when I was working on this Make Manitoba project, I was really excited to see the research that was being done at our very own university. And if you think of any of the concerns that we as consumers have about our food sources, so animal husbandry, environmental sustainability, um, animal welfare, um, and uh, human nutrition and food processing, all those things are being studied right here in Manitoba. They're being made with products grown here in Manitoba. And I think that's so exciting for us. And we are so fortunate to live in a province where all of that is happening right here. And then we can make delicious foods like this. So with that little bit of passion and emotion on our Manitoba proteins, let's jump right in and cook some of this TVP. And actually, I wanted to show you one more thing. This is what, um, so these are the soybeans that are grown in Manitoba. And then when the protein is removed from that and extruded into these dry flakes. So you can buy TVP in this dry flake format, or you can buy it pre-cooked and uh, pre-rehydrated in this format. And it's often sold under products like ground ground or um, meat alternatives. And now some of the meat alternatives on the market now, some are made with soy, some are made with pea protein, so just, or wheat protein. So just read the ingredient list and see uh, what your uh, options are when it comes to buying products like this. Now you can imagine this product here is going to be very quick to cook up. Basically, we're just going to heat it and we're gonna add some seasoning. So let's get started with that right away. We are going to start with a hot pan, add a little bit of oil, and we are going to saute our onions and garlic first this time to get them to be nice and translucent because they will take the longest to, uh, to cook in this in this recipe, so it's very quick indeed. So I'm adding both the garlic and the, the onions to my pan and making sure that I'm stirring as they become glossy. You don't want to burn them or brown them. Obviously, we don't want to burn them, but we don't want to brown them either. They tend to get a little bit bitter flavored if, uh, if they get too brown, so we want to prevent that and you'll see a lot of recipes uh, telling, you, telling you that as well. So um, now the textured vegetable protein, you can find this in the vegetarian section of your grocery store. That's the uh, pre-cooked uh, version. And the flakes you can usually find in the bulk food section or in bulk stores um, sold as textured vegetable protein or TVP flakes. So that you can look, look for that. If you're um, in a really a fine specialty store, you can actually get TVP in different formats as well. So you can get it in larger chunks that would replicate more like a chicken nugget, or um, you can get them in curls uh, and uh, different size of flakes as well. So depending on the kind of food that, you, that you'd like to cook. So now that our onions are a little bit glossy, I'm going to go ahead and add my TVP. And unlike with the ground meat where I was trying to keep it nice and flat, I can just go ahead and crumble this into the, the mixture right away. And we are just concentrating on getting it nice and hot. So the seasoning that we're going to use for this is exactly like we used for the bison version as well, or the other ground beef or ground, ground meat versions. And uh, again, the key is to taste and to adjust based on the protein source that you're using and your family's personal uh, preferences. So I am adding the chili powder, the cumin and the oregano.
So to learn more about textured vegetable protein and this recipe, definitely check out the Make Manitoba website and it'll give you more information about textured vegetable protein, some of the research that's happening on the different vegetable uh, proteins that are being researched and the different techniques and qualities that they're looking at as they're looking for, um, looking at the different uh, vegetable proteins that are available. So everything from how do we uh, make sure that the land is uh, tr being treated and managed efficiently to uh, how is the human nutrition component of this, how is the processing happening, and how can we be more efficient at the, uh, at the innovations or at the company processing the plant, the, the vegetable proteins to best uh, replicate and mimic the flavor and texture that consumers are looking for. So all of those things are being addressed and you'll find more information at that Make Manitoba website. So that's pretty much it. Um, it didn't take much more than just stirring a bunch of things and adding some, uh, some ingredients. And you'll see that this is a little bit wetter than our uh, ground bison version. But again, I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a taste test. And that's pretty good. Um, I think it has enough salt and um, peppery flavor already. I am going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Look, I know my family, I know they like it a little bit on the spicy side. So here I go with a little bit of cayenne, stir that in. If you want it to be even more saucy, you can add a little bit of water to this and um, get a little bit more of that flu fluidity. Otherwise, we are good to go. And now the most fun part of Taco Tuesday is the taco bar. And what a great opportunity for you to put out a couple of different types of uh, toppings. So obviously the veggies and the cheese and the and the little uh, savory toppings, the sour cream, this uh, um, avocado cilantro sauce, a little green onion, cilantro or parsley, whatever you wish, and to offer some different uh, protein options. So today we have our bison and our TVP, but of course you could try different types of toppings as well and different sources of uh, plant protein or animal-based protein. And then you just go ahead and assemble and have some fun with it. So this first taco that I'm going to make is I'm going to use my TVP. And so I start with the TVP and notice how um, for anyone who's a little bit concern concerned or hesitant, it does look very similar to the ground meat version. And so that's the idea behind the TVP is to really mimic that look, taste, texture, and mouth feel. It's a little bit softer than your ground meats, but it's, it's pretty tasty. And by the time we add all these other toppings, um, it's going to be easy to, uh, to introduce someone to this new texture that they, that they might have for the first time. So lots of different options. What's your favorite topping? I like a little bit of everything. The problem with a little bit of everything is your taco starts to get really full really quick. So uh, sometimes maybe less is better, but we'll do that on the next taco, right? A little bit of lettuce on there. Oh my gosh, I forgot the beans. And another plant-based protein source. It's gonna be loaded. I love this cilantro sauce cilantro avocado. Um, if you don't have this, you could just do slices of avocado. And uh, because I like cilantro, I'm going to add some of that. And how about, oh, what the heck, a little dollop of sour cream. You could also use a little bit of salsa on here. And then let's top it off with a squeeze of lime. And voila, your taco.
Perfect. Thanks for that, Getty. Uh, you've made me hungry. It's right around lunchtime. My stomach started to uh, to grumble looking at that, so I'll have to try that recipe perhaps tonight. Uh, so uh, as a reminder, if you have any questions, you can type them right into that questions chat on that small little um, screen that should be on the right when you first opened up. Uh, but I'll get us started with a few. So, you know, we're hearing a lot about flexitarian diets, right? And so I don't, could you give us a bit of a, a an explanation from your understanding of what a flexitarian diet and, and why someone might choose a flexitarian diet? I, I think it's just a, a trend to people exploring different types of foods and being open and a little bit more laissez-faire about what it is they're they're eating and not worrying so much about I'm eating an all meat or an all vegetarian or an all fish like it, it doesn't really matter what we're looking for is good nutritious delicious food and I think the the message that we're hearing from the food guides and leading health organizations um, is variety is the key and so I think people looking at a more flexitarian diet are are being more flexible and are thinking and looking for food that uh, that offers a large variety. We know that food is more than its individual components and that when you package a food in a certain way um, as nature uh, nature does for us uh, we can benefit from from that cool little package and how it's delivered to us. So um, flexitarian fle being flexible. Perfect. Uh, and so on the topic of textured vegetable protein and including that in a flexitarian diet, um, do you know the price difference between if you were to buy TVP and another ground meat that would traditionally be used in tacos? Yeah, I absolutely do. And in fact, I'm just going to um, head to my handy dandy chart just so that uh, so that I get the information uh, correctly for you. Um, if you buy a package like that TVP that we were using in, in the recipe, that's going to cost you about $5, $4.98 at the uh, at the grocery store. Um, it's 340 grams. Um, our bison uh, would cost you for a pound, so 454 grams would cost you about $9.22. And chicken and uh, beef would, would run somewhere uh, closer to to where the TVP is at uh, at about five, maybe seven seven dollars per uh, per pound, so or per uh, yeah per pound per half kilo kilogram. And so you know some people are concerned with TVP about there being more ingredients um, with it. So I don't know if that makes a big nutritional difference between TVP and a ground meat. So I don't know if you can comment on you know perhaps some of the the protein differences or different nutritional differences between these options. Yeah. So, um, so, and this is why variety is really important, right? Because, uh, you know, some days we can be heavier on one particular nutrient than the, than the other, or throughout the day, we want to mix it up. So, um, so variety really is, uh, is important. So you're getting bits and pieces from different things. So some of the things that the, um, that the TVP may be offering that, uh, that your meat, uh, aren't or is you can actually get fiber from your uh, TVP which you're which you're not getting from your uh, animal sources um, on the flip side the uh, the animal based uh, products may offer a little bit more iron and, and protein although TVP does have um, some vitamin B's added uh, to it as as well so that's one of the the benefits of the processing part is that um, we can we can develop foods by adding um, different nutrients that we think uh, consumers might be lacking or might be needing or might be wanting uh, in their in their in their food as well. So um, the other thing that TVP now if you I don't know if you noticed in the recipe or not I did add a little bit of salt to the bison. Um, a version but I didn't to the TVP version because when I do that taste test I noticed that the TVP already has a little bit of salty flavor and when I checked the nutrition uh, label on uh, on that um, there is higher sodium levels in the um, in the in the TV TVP package so that probably is why I felt like mm, I don't think this needs any more any more salt so um, there are those kinds of differences uh, as well um, yeah the the, the protein um, 
they were all fairly fairly similar. The bison really uh, provided the most uh, protein with 25 grams per 100 grams of, uh, of bison versus 18 grams of protein per 100 grams of the TVP, but still a really great source of protein. The TVP, because it's from soybeans, does provide a complete protein. Um, so anyone who's concerned about that, um, you're getting all of that with the with the TVP. So um, is there a clear cut winner? Um, animal products uh, may have more or will have more saturated fats. Um, and that's why again it's a good idea to mix it up a little bit. But um, it, you know I there is no clear winner. The winner is variety, just choosing lots of different sources. Perfect. We had a question come in. Do you know, does TVP have a longer shelf life than fresh meat products would? Um, so the that's a, that is a good good question. I can keep this in my fridge. Um, I was looking at the at the best before date. So I bought this last week, um, and the best before date here is April twenty seventh. So it does have a longer shelf life than uh, fresh ground meats you would eat within three to five days. You can freeze this. Obviously, you can freeze your ground meats. You can also freeze uh, freeze this. Um, if anyone out there is um, camping, uh, looking for camping food, here's a, um, I made a little mix. So I dehydrated uh, some of my TVP uh, taco uh, filling, and this is going to go on a camping trip with with me and I'll rehydrate it with water and some heat and then I'll have a fresh burrito on the on the trail. Um, you could also dehydrate uh, ground lean, very lean ground beef or bison or chicken. Um, it, you just need to be a little bit more conscientious rather than the plant-based uh, protein. So so again some some trade-offs. And would that be because of the fat content uh, of the the protein? You don't want it to go rancid. Um, yes. Yeah, so it, so you know, I being very conscientious about lean uh, beef, uh, lean uh, bison, and bison already is uh, pretty lean. So so that's actually a good one. As are are any most game meats, uh, choosing a, a lean cut. Um, so yes, fat does not does not dehydrate. So you want to be really careful with that. And yeah. Perfect. Uh, another question. It says, I'm familiar with finding TVP in the grocery store. Is bison meat also available in most grocery stores? And then if not, where could we find bison? Yeah. So um, I, I think we are starting to see grocery stores becoming a little bit more open to lo local options. But your best bet is to either contact the farmer directly. So I know Borderland Agriculture, you can do that. Um, or go going to the specialty stores, um, your, your meat markets, uh, anywhere here in the, in the city for sure, and probably your, your rural uh, butcher shops as well will have access to some of those more um, unique local, uh, local meats uh, as well. Uh, to add to that, actually, in the first session for Egg Awareness Day, Brooks was presenting and he mentioned their product you can actually buy directly from their website, borderlandagriculture.com, uh, and they sell through Crampton's and then I think he said soon Vital Health. So we'll see some more um, local stores carrying some, some ground bison, which is a great option. Uh, okay, uh, another question for you. Uh, where can someone go to learn about buying more local foods or, or cooking with more local? So um, the Manitoba Agriculture has a, a buy local uh, or local Manitoba foods page. So you can Google uh, Google that. And then um, Great Taste of Manitoba and some of our local commodity groups also have some, some great recipe sections. So you can go to Eat Well, the canola website, Manitoba beef, Manitoba chicken. They all have some great uh, recipes and, and resources. The, um, the homefamily.net uh, website for, from the Manitoba Home Economist also has some great tips and uh, links to different resources uh, as well um, to help guide you through the process of finding and, and attracting. If you're looking, again, if you want to go direct, there's also the Prairie Fruit Growers Association and they list all your you, you pick uh, stores or locations so you can go pick directly yourselves uh, during the summer and then direct farm manitoba 
um, gives you access to like borderland agriculture, gives you access to farmers who sell direct, or it also lists different farmers market. And we are just around the corner. So um, farmers markets will be gearing up again soon. Another option for people interested in, in local access to local uh, fruits and veg in particular, but also meats and grains um, is doing a CSA. Now a CSA is, is stands for community supported agriculture. So what you do is you get a monthly subscription and you get whatever produce and products are, are offered by that particular farmer or CSA uh, group. So you could, so you sign up in the spring and say, yes, I will support you. That's the CSA part. Um, and you support the farmer to get the crops in the land, in the, in the garden, and then as they harvest, they share the harvest with you. So you may get this huge bounty, and I, that's the common um, comment that I hear is like, oh my gosh, I didn't expect as much uh, volume as I got, but you'll get seasonal, fresh, amazing produce, and some of it does include grains and or meat products as well. Oh, perfect. Um, another question uh, just came in. Do you think people are becoming more interested in cooking, maybe due to COVID, but also gardening and preserving? Absolutely. And I just um, I just wrote an article about this uh, at the big at the beginning of the year. And we are cooking and gardening more now this this past year than we have since uh, the 1970s. So there is definitely a resurgence in in interest, um, certainly, COVID has has helped that along, if if we can <laughs> say it like that. Um, so definitely, interest has spiked. But I think even even before COVID, there was a, a general generally a little bit more interest in sort of whole foods and where does our food come from and that curiosity leading people to plant one or two things outside and then last year we saw people's like no I'm I'm planting more and then you kind of get hooked and you and you want to see just how much you can plant in fact um, I caught the bug as well and I'm looking forward to growing some soybeans in my in my garden to see if I can harvest um, the edamame and the edamame are the the green um, bean pods that are from immature or young um, soybean plants so you don't wait until the end of the season but you harvest early and you get those green edamame beans so I'm looking forward to that Oh, it'll be great to see uh, if that works. I've definitely I saw the the surgeons of people gardening because last year trying to find my garden seeds when I normally went was miserable. So I shopped early this year. Uh, yes, to, you gotta get out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So in your demo, you showed a, a dry TVP and you mm -hmm. said you can rehydrate it. Do you know off the top of your head how is it's rehydrated? Is it just with water or yeah? So um these are the the TVP flakes. Um, and basically you put them in water, um, cover in, in water and just like, you know, think about you're making a cup of tea, you use hot water, you pour it over the leaves and it um, brings out flavor, right? You draw out the, the flavor and you know that hot water works better than cold water. Well, the same thing is true anytime you rehydrate. So you rehydrate this, put it in a bowl, cover it with warm or hot water, and within five to 10 minutes, your TVP will start to look very similar to the um, the ground kernels that I used in um, in the in the recipe, so they'll they'll pop back and uh, be squishy and gooey, and then you add your seasoning, and so you can absolutely start that recipe with this. And the the recipe page um, on the Make Manitoba site uh, does include instructions if you're using the uh, the dry flake formula. So for anyone who does want to sort of stock up and bump up their pantry having a having a bit of tvp stashed away um, and in this dry form it will absolutely keep for for a year or more uh, you know you're just hedging your bets and would you have to add salt to that one so you said you know the cooked one had a little bit of sodium would this one be more like uh ground meat where you might have to add a bit more salt 
to your um, season? Yeah, you know, I would I would always sort of uh, adjust the seasoning based on 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 taste, and I'm not um, I'm not sure of the ingredient list on this one, but yeah, I'm sure it would have less salt than than the prepared package. Um, and some of these packages, um, you know, I get the original and then add my own seasoning, but you can get different flavor packs of TVP. So it's already seasoned. So Mexican flavors or Italian seasoning or um, um, curried flavor, like you can get pre-seasoned, but just remember the more seasoned and the more mix is already in there, the less control you have over, over the ingredient content and the salt content and so forth. Would, are those dry flakes more economical than, than the rehydrated ones? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I um, can't remember the, the price off uh, offhand on that one, but you absolutely will be, uh, be saving money because of there's just less processing, less packaging, um, and less sort of, uh, there's one less step in the whole process. So you're saving all of, uh, all of that and definitely less packaging. So that's always a benefit. Perfect. We have time for a couple more questions. So what other recipes did you create with the make project? So I know you did this vegetarian tacos and I think yeah. you made a few so um, some of the other uh, ones include uh, an egg frittata, a, a mini egg frittata that you can make in a muffin tin and then take uh, take with you. I think that one's great for, for anyone who's on the go. I'm thinking farm families, sending someone on the tractor uh, with these little egg muffins is, uh, is always a good, uh, a good handy snack, super um, nutritious and filling and, and all that kind of stuff. I made a, a bannock recipe, that one's still to, to come, but I made it with hemp seed and canola oil. And so it is a seedy bannock, so lots of different seeds mixed into the uh, the bannock mix. Um, it's really great. Um, the yellow split peas that we grow in Manitoba, we used those and made a yellow, a spicy yellow split pea soup um, using some East Indian type of spices. So it's almost like a curry soup uh, uh, flavored. It's it's really lovely. And um, I also made a stir fry. And that's another great opportunity to try different protein sources. So just think of all the different things you could add to a stir fry, all the different protein sources um, you could toss into that as well. That's awesome. And to add to that, all of those recipes on the backside include lots of research information about what's going on in the faculty directly related to some of the ingredients in those recipes. So a great way to kind of connect with what's going yeah. on. So uh, a last question, what other types of learning opportunities do you offer? Well, um, I'm, I'm really enjoy uh, fresh seasonal produce and using whole foods in my cooking. So I do lots of recipes and uh, cooking tips and information uh, workshops on using fresh seasonal local uh, produce. So um, I have a website with uh, recipes and offer different workshops on preserving and using those, those fresh whole foods. Perfect. And then actually another question just came in um, asking what Farm and Food has online. So we have, we're open right now so people can come in and uh, book a pre-booked tour with us to see the hog barn and dairy barn. We have lots of online resources that are available for free as well. So uh, please check those out. So with that, uh, we are going to uh, wrap up our morning. Uh, and I just want to show you uh, my screen here because it has some uh, good links from today. So first, I want to thank everyone for joining in celebration of Agriculture Awareness Day in Manitoba. It's always fun to be involved uh, in these events and to celebrate in this type of way. If you're interested in visiting the Farm and Food Discovery Centre, you can head to our website, find information there or contact contact us directly. You're going to receive a follow-up email um, that's going to include a recording of this video and also the links listed here and the vegetarian taco recipe. But if you cannot wait until that comes, you can head to makemanitoba.ca and access those uh, recipes directly. I want to thank Getty for sharing some of your experience uh, and your knowledge with everyone. It's very interesting to hear your perspective and what you see going on. Uh, so thank you so much. If you want to uh, keep up to date with what Getty's doing or access some of her recipes and workshops, you can head to gettystewart.com. 
Uh, thank you to Borderland Agriculture that provided us with the bison to be featured in this recipe. If you want to learn more about how they farm or get access to their bison, you can head to borderlandagriculture.com. And finally, a big thank you to Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development for inviting us to participate in Agriculture Awareness Day. You can head to their local food page, that link is right there on, on your screen, and they have access to some awesome resources about supporting local food uh, and about different food process right here in Manitoba. So with that, please enjoy your Taco Tuesday and stay tuned for a short uh, quality product video that's gonna launch right now. The reason why I'm a farmer is because I get to deal with life every day. It's probably the first goal of any farmer to have the livestock looked after and cared for. The commitment that we have for such a high quality product, we put so much into this product to make sure that meat is safe and they can cook it correctly and then have that great eating experience.